Uh, I have always, I'm a huge Muppet Show fan. I've been back in the 70s, I watched it a lot in England. Uh, and I used to always enjoy the slightly weirder characters. There's a character called Hugger Wugger, who sings a song called Hugger Wugger. And he's just this guy, he's a very big Muppet with a gigantic foghorn for a nose. And occasionally he blasts this other little character. And I, I, I used to find that as a kid, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, I also love the secondary characters of Muppet Show. Muppet Show always has very interesting secondary characters, guys who aren't, you know, Fozzie or Piggy or Kermit, but the guys who also are in the show, who want to be in the show. So, Lou Zealand is a guy I love, who is the fish-throwing guy who's got this crazy Italian accent, whose act is basically throwing fish. Um, but you can never go on the show, so that is someone who I love. Uh, and there's another guy called Bobby Benson, who is... A the Muppets are as one-dimensional as they've always been! Hey, watch it! Jason Segel, Amy Adams, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, and introducing the newest Muppet, Walter. Uh, when you make a Muppet movie, no scene is easy. Uh, puppets are, by their nature, hard to work with because of <laughs> they are puppets, and they are operated by people who work beneath the frame. So obviously everything is pretty complex. Um, uh, and the general rule is the more puppets, the harder it's going to be. So whenever you see a scene in the movie whereby there are, say, 60 or 70 puppets, that's going to be 100 or 110 people beneath those puppets. So the question then becomes, where do you hide those people? Because that's hard. Uh, and and the, the great trick and the illusion and the, and the joy of Muppets is the idea that there's a world which we create whereby puppets and humans coexist. And that's within the frame. But if you were to come back from that frame, you would see a world whereby there's people and poles and sticks and rods and all sorts of equipment that creates this illusion. Uh, and that obviously takes time to set up. You know, when you're on stage, you work on a, on, you're, the whole stage is raised up by five and a half feet. And uh, the performers stand up, and that's very good for them in terms of their movement, give them the most freedom of movement. Uh, but when you're on a location, it's a completely different thing, whereby they, you, could, you could dig a hole in the road if you wanted to, but it's quicker to have them get low. But they still can't get that low because, of course, they have to sit on kind of little rollies to be able to move around. So you're still working up at a weird height, but it's not quite as high up on the stage. So their movement is restricted to a degree. And, of course, the real world isn't built at three foot up. It's built at the ground level. So you have to adapt your environment to match the height of your camera. And that, again, adds problems in terms of production design and all that sort of thing. So it's all complicated. Tratamos de reunir a la vieja pandilla de nuevo. No hemos hecho esto en mucho tiempo. Sus fans no los abandonaron. El mundo no ha olvidado. Sé que es imposible, pero tenemos que tratar. Hoy volverá la música. Es tiempo de encender las luces. Veremos a los mapets. I mean, Amy Adams is my absolute favorite singer songer, singer dancer. I mean, an actress. She's incredible. She's incredibly versatile, but she also has an incredible innocence to her whereby she needed to be a girl who would love Jason Siegel as Gary. And Gary's a bit of a doofus, so she had to be a very uh, warm-hearted girl who saw the best in people. And Amy is the absolute best person to do that, and she carries off with the plumb. <laughs>